Hey guys, welcome to day 10 post-op. My legs are still definitely tender. If I'm not moving at all, I honestly can't feel anything. But then as soon as I like move my legs, like if I try to bring my knees up to my chest and it pulls the back of my hamstring where they took out some of the fat and it just feels super tight. Like a little bit bruised, a little bit tender, but just like really tight. Today I realized the tip of my nose was super red and then there was these perfect little lines on each side that went right there along the bridge, which is exactly where the cast was glued onto my nose. But it was just like super red everywhere that the skin has peeled off so far and wherever there was glue from the adhesive from the cast. So one thing that I wanted to tell you guys, when I scratch my eye down here, it keeps itching along my lash line. My eyelid is totally numb. All all around here. It literally feels like someone gave me a shot of lidocaine and it's like I can feel the touching but it's numb. So I did my makeup a little bit. I still feel like I look super weird. You can still see the bruises through the makeup. My cheeks are so 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 swollen still. I'm pretty sure they're gonna go down by like at least half of what they are. I can just see the outline of where the fat was put in. So I don't have a lot going on but I figured I would maybe take advantage of my extra time today and show you guys what I have inside this box that I've been carrying around with me all week. So what I did with everything that had to do like cleaning wise, supplies that I needed, medicine, I mean, just anything that I needed after my surgery, I wanted to keep it all in one space. So I put it all inside a box and then I just kept it in my room so it wasn't in everybody's way. But every time that I would get up in the morning and wash my face and everything I would bring the box with me and everything was in there and I didn't have to look for something because I lost it even though I didn't end up misplacing my chapstick at one point but I think that's because I kept taking it around with me because I keep breathing through my nose the afrin is helping to open it up but it almost feels like I have a pea or like a tiny marble shoved up in my nose like there's still air moving through but there's like this thing in there. <laughs> That's just what it feels like. Anyway, so like I breathe through my mouth a lot and then your mouth gets dry or you know, your lips get dry. So it's just like a little box. And I pretty much put in here everything that they gave me at the hospital before I headed out. There are a couple other things that I'll show you guys that I've also kept like either in the bathroom or on my nightstand. But we're just gonna start digging through and I'm gonna show you guys all of what I have. And these are also things that I would recommend having. I'll try to explain as I go. So I have baby wipes and summer's eve wipes. Of course get whatever you like because you might have a hard time being able to get in the shower as often especially the first few days. Some people have a rougher recovery than others. Also boxes of Kleenexes everywhere. Your nose will constantly be dripping uh, especially the first few days. There's tissues all over this house. So another thing that I did keep next to my nightstand was crackers. They say salting crackers but I like these ones. They're called club crackers but they're just like so buttery and they actually taste good but so I really liked these because with the pain pills all I had to do was eat like five of them or something to feel like I had some kind of substantial amount of food in my stomach so like if I woke up in the middle of the night which I did when I was taking my pain pills every four hours I would wake up I'd shove a few crackers in my mouth chomp them down also kept a water bottle next to that and my pain pill I just had it ready and then I would just take that and I never had any problems thank goodness so that was very convenient always kept those around in the case that I wasn't feeling like I wanted to go up and make a sandwich to take with my pain pill okay now for the actual box q-tips okay so I went through an entire box of the 500 count already within nine days depending on how thorough you are you might go through more you could possibly go through less it just kind of depends but so then I had my bromelain now the bromelain I started taking it before the surgery but I have read that it can cause more bleeding in surgery the surgeon said it was fine not to worry about it that I could still take it if I wanted but he also said see my nose is dripping again and so it will just randomly just drip just like once, that's it. I keep stashing my Kleenexes in my shoulder. I don't know why, like there's another one in my shoulder. I keep like putting it right there. It's the weirdest thing. I I think I'm turning into an old lady just like hiding Kleenexes up my sleeve. Like my grandma used to do that and that's why I kept thinking of putting it in my shoulder. I don't know what I'm, 
I probably dropped Kleenexes all over the house because I constantly had them in my shirt and they were just like falling through. So yeah, so with the bromelain, he was also telling me to just drink pineapple juice if I really wanted to and just not have to worry about it. But I had the supplement already, so I figured I'll just take the supplement. It's good for the inflammation. So after the surgery, I would definitely say to take that. Of course, anything I say, confirm it with your doctor. Don't just think that because I said it, it's something to do. Double check with your doctor if you're doing this, just to make sure. These are in no specific order. I'm just randomly grabbing. So I have this biotine spray. I've showed most of the things that are in here to you guys uh, while I was getting ready in the first few days of my surgery. So I like the spray because it's easy and you can just spray it in your mouth and it tastes minty and it does help quite a bit during the nights that I was breathing through my mouth. I would recommend this like if you have allergies, if you have a cold. I didn't know this stuff existed. When I learned about this, I was like, I need to have that. <laughs> so I ended up buying both kinds because I wasn't sure which one was going to be better, the gel or the spray. Now I tried both and the gel lasts longer because it's creamier, but it almost feels like you're putting like Vaseline in your mouth a little bit. And this one in particular, did not have a minty taste but it says symptom relief for up to four hours and this one says the same thing but this one I feel like it's like a liquidier substance and this one's just thicker so they're both just slightly different but they do the same thing I'm same brand obviously chapstick Definitely need that. Uh, your mouth will get super dry. The Afrin sprays. Previously, I bought the kind that you have to like tip your head back and pour in. It feels like it goes in a straight stream. You wanna get the kind that you can mist up through your nose because then it just kind of sprays all over and it does most of the work for you. This one in particular is like the allergy sinus. I don't know if they have the original one in this kind of a misting top. I would hope so because this one's menthol, like it's got menthol in it. And I don't know if I would have wanted to do that the first few days of my surgery because it just seems like your nose is really raw because all your stitches are fresh and then you're spraying mint over that. Like, eh, I don't know. I just don't know about that. <laughs> then the Arnica gel. I wanted because it helps with bruising. It also helps with inflammation. So on here it says it helps with muscle pain, stiffness, swelling from injuries, bruising. This is supposed to be natural. It's like a homeopathic thing. So Arnica is a plant. But anyway, so they make these gels and you just apply it over your bruise or over your swollen area and it's supposed to help and shorten the time of the bruising. I think it's helped me because my bruising was really really bad and considering it's only a week later it's actually it's getting there it's definitely going away reasonably fast it's still hard to have patience for a giant bruise on your face but it seems like it's going away pretty quick considering I applied this on my eyes I applied it on my leg because I have a bruise right under my butt cheek from where they extracted the fat to put on my face so a good thing to have in the case that you have bruising you might not even have bruising and then you don't really need it but I kind of just went to the store and bought everything because I wanted to be prepared before because after the surgery if you're miserable you're not gonna go to the store and hopefully someone's gonna go to the store for you I'm sure you'll have someone that's gonna take care of you that would do that but I don't know I don't like to ask people to do things even if I'm like in my deathbed so <laughs> I don't know maybe you're more willing at that point then the basitracin cream and this you have to have this is part of like the doctor's list you apply it to all your stitches this is also another thing that that was on the list that they tell you to get except I don't know about this brand in particular because it has on the ingredients sodium bicarbonate which is baking soda and I don't think there's anything wrong with that but I would definitely confirm with the doctor because they say they want you to spray saline spray but that's it but the way that this sprays it's perfect I hated the other saline bottle this has got like the finest mist I really really like the way that this sprays the other one was literally making me gag so they gave me these instructions when I left the hospital and it just kind of tells you post-operative care what website to go to that's got little instructional videos just so you can learn how to clean up the incision sites I also watched all the videos and because I kept forgetting when you're taking medications you forget very easily I don't know about you but I was forgetting a lot of things where I was like was I supposed to spray that like once a day twice a day like how many times am I supposed to be doing this so I tried to take little notes and put them in the bag my little chicken scratch because there's a lot to read over also they gave me like three of these four by four gauze and that was for you folded it up and you just taped it underneath and you look like you have that white mustache when it's draining some people might bleed more than others I had to wear mine for two days but also I had a couple of them folded up I 
had water in here because it's like a plastic tub. And so I had two of these folded up. I was resting them on my eyes because you don't want to put direct ice on the fat, apparently. I think I read that somewhere. So they, they just want you to put something cold. So right when you take this out from cold water, it feels cold. It warms up pretty quick, but you just keep switching them out. Ah, the saline. Okay, so this is the one. This bottle is a liar. It says that it's a spray. It is not a spray. This is more of a rinse. Like you literally are dripping it down. And if you watch the first few videos, it's funny because I'm sitting there like squeezing it as hard as I can and there's nothing coming out of it. So I was like, I don't understand how this works. Like, it was like, you gotta be smarter than the bottle. And then finally I realized like on the fourth day, I'm just gonna blame it on the pain pills. I had to tip my head back and then pour it in. But then as soon as it dripped back, I was literally gagging and hacking. So I have, my pain pills there's still obviously a lot of them left because I stopped taking my pain pills super fast. I don't know why I guess I could have kept taking them, but it just seemed like I didn't need them. I took them for the first two days. And then on the third day, God created the Remington bull action rifle so that man could fight the dinosaurs. I decided to cut it in half and only take half a pain pill just because like when it was supposed to be wearing off towards the second day, I was like, I don't feel like I'm going to be in any pain, but you want to be careful with that because you don't want to find out that you're in pain by ending up in pain and then having to wait for a pain pill to kick in so the first day i would not attempt not taking a pain pill just because that is just crazy talk i've had that happen with my teeth like with teeth problems and i wouldn't wish that on anyone but i don't know i just had a feeling that on the third day i was like i think i'm doing all right and so i cut it in half and then by the fourth day i was only taking half a pain pill just before bed because as soon as i laid on my bed it was putting a lot of pressure pressure on the areas where they took out the fat on my legs and that was super tender like it's still tender but um, I finally learned that I can prop myself up off the bed a little bit with a pillow and it makes it a lot more comfortable. Also this is just the empty bottle for my antibiotics. You only take them until they're gone and they've been already gone for a few days. The Marilax. I got the little bottle. I figured I wouldn't really need much of that. I'm normally not the kind of person that has issues with that but when you're taking narcotics you will and you do <laughs> i think i waited till the third day and so i shouldn't have done that i think i should have just started taking it as soon as i was taking the pain pills because that was not a pleasant experience to be completely honest with you and this once again is in one of my vlogs that was the most painful part out of the entire surgery but i only had to take it the first two days and everything's back to normal now but i also stopped taking my pain pills so that makes a big difference anti-nausea pills i never had to use these this time my last uh, surgery i did and they did, weren't even working i was just constantly so sick but last time i was also taking percocet my body does not agree with percocet so this time they gave me the generic form of norcos and that was a uh, hydrogen or hydrogen <laughs> hydrocodone and the hydrocodone is a hundred percent compatible with me it didn't make me feel weird it didn't make me itch it didn't make like i had absolutely no side effects except for the fact that i apparently couldn't poop <laughs> so but if that was it i was so happy because i'm telling you my last surgery i felt like i had a flu for an entire week i was so so miserable and the pain pills just felt like they were wearing off within a very short time and these ones it actually worked and then they sent me home with sterile water for irrigation now this is the water that they actually put into this little tray with the folded up gauze because i was already bruising as soon as i woke up so that's what they were having me lay on my face so i still have some of that because um i started using tap water and ice cubes after that but that was in there because i mean i put everything that they handed me from the hospital in here i ended up buying some tape this is like the cloth type and i don't know if this is the best tape that i could have used but if you watched the earlier days i had to like rig this little thing where I put two panty liners together and left the back plastic and just like taped around it to put over the patches on my incision. There was five incision sites on my leg. Two of them were leaking a lot of fluid from where they took out the fat. So the two that were leaking a lot, like when I say a lot, I mean I was wearing my leggings and sitting on multiple folded towels where there was five layers and the fluid leaked through my pants and through 
four, five layers of towels. Luckily it stopped on the last layer and it did not go down to the bed. But yeah, there was just a lot of fluid coming out, which they warned me about. It's not abnormal for that to happen. If anybody's had liposuction, I'm pretty sure that's kind of what happens because I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. Like it's the same concept, except they just reuse the fat that they're taking out. Except the reason I had five incisions was because they couldn't find any. It was kind of funny. My friend was, uh, I was laughing pretty hard about it this morning. Uh, cause she's like, oh, Sylvia's poor problems, not being able to find enough body fat. But to me, it really sucks because I, I was trying really hard to put on some fat so they could take it out and put it on my face. Oh, little Elvis. Come there with me. All this wants to escape. <laughs> it's crazy here. So like I had been trying to have enough fat so they would be able to find some because the surgeon did tell me, they're like, if you're too lean and we can't find fat, then we can't obviously put it in your face. So I was really concerned about that because that's the reason that I needed a fat transfer in my face in the first place was because I'm just a very thin person that I don't hold on to fat very well. It's not something that I'm like extremely happy about either. I know a lot of people are like, oh, I wish I had your problem. Like, no, it's the same thing as having the opposite problem. I'm 33 now and I'm finally at a point where I accept my body the way it is, but I've also like filled it out where I have a more like adult body because for a very long time, I looked like a 12 year old boy. And that's not something that a girl wants to look like. It's, it's not something that I would think is like the attractive way to look for me, but it would just be the same thing as like, I don't know if someone was more heavy and they were concerned about their size, like that's how someone that's too skinny that wants to be bigger feels. So anyway, it's not a poor me, but it sucks. I've always tried to put on weight. I've just kind of gotten over it now that I've gotten older. Hydrogen peroxide. Uh, so you need like a small container that will hold your Q-tips, probably like right side up is preferable. Uh, so you can actually grab them. You let them soak for like a minute and then you clean your nose out with the hydrogen peroxide soaked Q-tips. And you do that for, I think a total of seven weeks because I went into my one week post-op and they told me to do it six more weeks because there's stitches still healing. There's a lot of things going on. So you keep all that clean. So these, I don't know why I kept them. If I had had more nausea, these would come in really handy. I'm gonna keep them because they're not obviously not used. It came in very handy when I woke up from my anesthesia and realized that it wasn't like last time. Last time when I woke up from anesthesia, I was very happy and fine and felt fine, made it home. And as soon as I got home, that's when I got sick. So this time when I woke up from anesthesia, I was not having a good time. I immediately felt nauseous and it just came out. Now, the reason that that happened was because when you're having surgery on your face, the blood can drain backwards and then it goes into your stomach. So if blood ever goes in your stomach, it comes back out. Your body does not like to swallow blood. <laughs> so once I threw up, I was still very nauseous. They actually had to give me a fenugrin shot. And honestly, if I still push on my arm, I can still feel it. My muscle is still sore. That needle was crazy. That was like, it was a freaking huge needle. It's been sore. It's the ninth day and I can still feel in my muscle. Like, I don't know if they hit my bone. I don't know what the heck, but it was a gnarly freaking shot and it made me so sleepy. They were trying to get me out of that recovery room and I remember being like one eye open, trying so hard to wake up because I knew that they wanted me out and I just could not pull it together. Anyway, but luckily the nausea went away and they were able to get me out of there, but I was probably sitting in there for a couple of hours because I was struggling when I woke up. And then I was fine. As soon as I got in my car, I remember being totally fine. Like I started recording and talking to you guys. I was probably a little loopy, but I wasn't in pain, which is awesome. But anyway, I have two of these. They sent me home with them probably in the case that I threw up in the car. So I have the bags from the pharmacy and it's got the instructions in it. That's why I kept it. I don't think that I really need anything unless I wanted to keep the receipts. They come with instructions and like things that you might need to be aware of for your medications. And they gave me some kind of a flyer for, uh, it says what you should know about surgery and DVT slash PE prevention. So pulmonary embolism and deep vein thrombosis. I've taken some medical classes, but I don't know. I'm gonna say that this is like to prevent blood clots, which makes a lot of sense because you do not want to be laying around too much. I know after surgery, you just wanna lay there and be like, everyone do things for me, bring me my grapes. 
but you should find excuses to get up and walk around and get the blood flowing because otherwise you can get a blood clot and that's kind of scary. But there are little preventions that they tell you to do. If you have to be laying down a bit longer, stretching your legs out and like tightening them and relaxing them, that just kind of gets the blood flowing a little bit too. Here's the little roll of tape. Now, this is kind of funny. This is a hairnet. Story behind this, when they were putting the little gauze under my eye, okay, so picture one on each side, but it, it wasn't staying on because they had me sitting up. They didn't want me to like fall asleep and relax and take a nap in there. They wanted me to like start waking up and get out of it. So they put that on, but they needed it to stay. So what they do is they put this hairnet around down here and they have it like hold on to the things with a little band so you can't see and I was sitting there and I was feeling very claustrophobic for some reason I was shivering also right when I woke up and they were asking me if I was cold and I had a blanket over my lower half and the thought of having another blanket on me it just made me like want to like throw it off of me but so then they're putting this on my face and I can't see so I have all these blankets on me and I have this thing like covering my eyes it, it looks so ridiculous so I tell them I'm like I can't see can I just like tear some holes in it or something the nurses started laughing they actually said that nobody had ever asked for this before and I was like why would nobody ask for this like I can't see and I wanted to see what was going on around me I was trying so hard to keep my eyes open not being able to like, see what's going on in front of me when there's so much movement and all these things happening it was just kind of like I don't know so this is what they ended up doing for me Like, are you freaking kidding me? And they were laughing so hard because I literally was sitting there like this, like all miserable, just like trying not to throw up again. And they're just like cracking up. They're like, it makes sense, you know, that you would want to see, but it's just weird because nobody has ever asked for that before. You're the first person. And so at least I did do something that was funny because I was also in my haze saying how I never say anything entertaining when I'm waking up from anesthesia. And they were like, oh, you know, maybe some people just don't react that way because I was very coherent when I was getting dressed I realized that my gauze on my legs was already totally leaked through it had already leaked through my gown and everything and it was on the sheet that I was sitting on and so I was like do we need to change these patches I was asking them questions on whether we needed to get certain things done or whatever so I was like totally responsible and then they bring me out with the wheelchair to the car and even before I got in the car I was like but my legs are leaking I don't want to get it on the car seat so I laid out a plastic plastic bag to sit on. Like, I was totally on top of it. It's just kind of like some of the things that you do are kind of silly in a way. So they gave me this along with all the other things and I was just cracking up but I know it was because they wanted me to keep the patches on in the car and they probably figured that I would wear this ridiculous thing while I was just like sitting in the car for the drive home because I had such a long drive. So that was actually the last thing but that's hilarious. I just left everything in this box but I'm kind of glad that I had this because I had to show you guys that's just funny. And and so that is what is in the box. Yeah, I think that pretty much covers all the supplies that I would recommend or find necessary. Other than that, I would say definitely have many pillows. You want to sleep with your head propped up. Some people will sleep fully sitting up. Now, once again, do whatever your doctor tells you. But my doctor said that two pillows is plenty, just as long as your head is elevated above your heart. And then another pillow, like if you're having a fat transfer or whatever, if you're having lipo or anything like that, I mean, probably the more pillows, the better and the softer, the better, because I cannot imagine having the feeling that I have on my thighs, like all over my body or all over my abdomen. Like, I've said it's not like extremely like painful the end of the world but I would definitely be still taking my pain pills if it was like all over my abdomen and everything I feel like I don't know and if it was like all over my thighs or whatnot I feel like what they did with me is supposed to be minimal because it doesn't require that much fat to inject into your cheeks so if you're actually full on getting a lipo procedure they're doing work in huge areas and that a lot of surface area to feel that bruising feeling I oof. I sympathize. That would that would really suck. So I would want a lot of soft pillows. I would build myself a nest that was like a cloud and just lay in it. I think tonight we're having some people over to watch one of the football games. And so I still feel like 
in person so you can see how swollen it is right around there so it's gonna go down a lot you can kind of see the bruise right here I don't want to mess with it too much because the longer it can hold on the better because I don't want to have to reapply my makeup I'm not gonna reapply my makeup before anybody comes over just because like around the family everyone's already seen me without the makeup on a week ago and I was looking rough I even tried to like cover it with a hat which probably gave it more of a shadow and made my bruises look even darker but everyone was like oh my gosh that looks like it hurts so bad and I'm like it doesn't hurt but it looks pretty bad <laughs> like so anyway if you guys want to see a close-up of what is going on on this mug and my nose is still so swollen I still can't get used to it when I look at it from the side I, I just feel like I look like a whole other person it's so weird I don't know once it all calms down I really think I'm gonna like it and I know I keep saying that but it's just right now it almost looks like this fake piece that I'm like wearing right across my the middle part of my face you know like those masks because my cheeks are so much bigger but they're super swollen I'm probably still gonna stay out of being in too much of a public situation for a couple more weeks until everything really calms down just because I feel kind of weird still going out in public I feel like I still want to cover my face even with makeup on I know that on camera it might not be that noticeable but in person my makeup looks just super cakey and crusty and you can just tell that I'm covering up some craziness around my eyes well guys it is the end of day 10 pretty much today it's been exactly the same as yesterday I can tell that everything's healing a little bit more just because everything's slowly getting itchier and itchier so like inside my nose it just keeps like itching the stitches are pulling and so it's really hard not to mess with my nose obviously it's still tender I noticed that it's super tender right in the inner corners right here when I was wiping off my makeup with the makeup remover wipe I kind of like push kind of hard around my forehead because obviously I don't need to be careful with that and on my eyelids and then I get like super soft right around like this middle section but when I was wiping off on my eyelids I kind of got in here like not really thinking anything of it and it was super tender I was like okay definitely need to be careful right there because I just forget that the entire bridge of the nose was worked on so it's all kind of still obviously bruised and tender and it will be for you know six more weeks so I'll give you guys a close-up of what's going on with the incisions sadly I feel like on this side it's gonna scar and I really don't want it to but it's looking like a pretty deep line so I don't know if it's gonna like fully recover but we'll see it's still kind of soon to be able to really tell but oh, I don't know it's looking a little deep here's the close-up of this side nice shiner still there my nose is looking oh my gosh so small it's crazy <laughs> from the front and underneath you can see that scar right there so far this side didn't get that I don't know why this side was just wanting to be more complicated but whatever and there's not much I can do about it now and then this side I mean this bruise went so much further out uh, everything's like my legs are still a bit tender and sore but it just gets slightly better every day still when I sit down it gets uncomfortable especially in the car and, like the truck is super bumpy so it's like not the most comfortable usually in the truck I'll sit on a pillow I try to bring a pillow in there with me just because it kind of takes the pressure off of my thigh area and it really helps. In the other cars, they're a little bit softer, so I don't mind them as much. That's it for today. Bye.